it real I'm independent, I don't need no deal I'm Jaws on the beat, I got flow that kills Do my thing with a few G's, Lauren Hill Also added in Logic 10.5 is a new updated sampler that replaces the EXS24 but is completely backwards compatible. So let's break it down and see how this has been greatly improved on. As we can see, the layout has completely changed. So let's break down how this new sampler works and how we can organize it out. So as we can see, it works in kind of a rack system. And across the top here, we've got the different elements of the synth all labeled out. The little yellow dot next to each word quite simply activates that region. So we can really focus down on just the key part we want to work on. Or we can have all loaded up and it's working sort of a rack system. If it's too large, we simply get a scroll. It's completely resizable and vector based as well. So we can make it ridiculously large if you so desire, or we can shrink it right down. Functional and usable size. Let's go from left to right in terms of modules. First, we've got the synth module. And when this is the only module switched on, we also get the additional controls like the glide time and pitch bend below. You see, if we turn another part of sampler on, that disappears. So these are kind of our global controls. We've got our pitch and fine tune. And we've got our filter. Now, by default, it's deactivated. We can just switch it on here. And much like before, we've got all of our different slopes available to us in there with cutoff resonance and drive much as they were before. These won't have changed as it is backwards compatible with the ESX24. So your slopes and your drive should sound the same as they always have. We have our filter blend section where we can blend between one and two. We now have a nice switch here which shows whether we're going to have them in serial or parallel. When we switch them into parallel we can then blend between filter one and two using the control just here. But we can just leave them in serial it's always going to run filter one into filter two that way. And of course we have filter two itself, exactly the same setup as before. And then we've got our amp, so our overall out volume and our pan. Next we have our modulation matrix settings, much like before, except now they're much better organized. Um, simply switch them on and off. We have our source, target and amount. So for example, LFO one here is going to the pitch and is being pitched up by 50 cent. Whereas if it's not relevant in cent, we'll have a percentage control slider instead. And we can also have our via control. So if we want to link it to something like the mod wheel, it's going to be linked to the mod wheel with an inversion switch. So it's super ergonomic and really easy to program what you're after. If you want to have more than the five controls that are in there, it's very simply a plus switch and it's just going to keep adding those infinitum for you. You can have as many as you could possibly want in there. If you had a huge number of modulation matrices set up, we have a filter by section, so we can filter by their target or their via source as well. Let's have a look at our modulators section. Here things have changed slightly from the AXS24, at least in the way it's set up. The modulators make a lot more sense in how they're shown here now, but by default, we've now got envelope one, which is still the amplitude as it always was, and then envelope two, which can be changed via the mod matrix to be linked to whatever parameter we desire. In terms of velocity amount, is now just very simple slider on here and the GUI is fully controllable so you can very quickly set up the ADSR that you're after. Now when we open up an envelope like this it doesn't have to be ADSR we can actually do AHDSR so we've got our attack hold decay sustain release or we can take that to ridiculous proportions now. ADSR is going to be suitable for most applications but it's nice that we can go so much further and have really complex and convoluted envelopes now. We're also not limited to the number of envelopes envelopes or LFOs now. And speaking of LFOs, we've just got this one here. The sync system works as before. We're going to switch the note on and that's going to sync and give us a rate option. We can just scroll through our different rates here and we can change our wave type just up here as well. We can also switch it to be single polarity or bipolar just with the control at the bottom. And we can also have it running in mono or poly depending what our patch is looking to do. Now we're also not limited to the number of envelopes or LFOs we can have. We have an envelope edition and an LFO edition and we can can add these until we've got nine in total. If you want to remove one, we can simply select the minus here will highlight and we can remove it as well. So being able to have a combination of nine different envelopes and LFOs is incredibly powerful and a very welcome addition. And here's where the biggest part of the update really comes into effect here. The mapping system It is now a very simple drag and drop mapping system. So we can drop a sample in and move the zones around as desired. Let's open up a slightly more complex patch. So here we have one of the pianos that is available in Logic.
And as you can see, we can now very simply drop samples into a zone. And just with a drag and drop, we can set velocity. We can set the number of keys that they're available over as well. And we can do this with multiple samples very easily. If we were to start a completely fresh patch here, so let's initialize. So if we just recall the default, we can just go into where we'd normally load up our presets. And we just go recall default like so. We can bring in some samples. So I'm just going to take the one samples from all of these from the first octave. When we drop them in, each sample automatically covers an octave. We know that's not right. We're going to drop it in and they're very easy to rearrange now. So if I take the C1 and we can just move that to where we want it to be. And we know that's probably going to go down one note. And we know that our next note is going to be E. So we can just make this so it goes from so we can make it so it goes from B to D sharp one. And we just need to change its root note down to C1 here. And then we can just bring over E, knowing that that can go from E up to G sharp, bring the A sharp in there. And if we've got velocity layers as well, we can just simply drag it down and we could put the velocity layer on the top of it like so. As you can see, they even snap into position now. It's incredibly useful. And we can even manage them in groups as well. So if we did want a dedicated velocity group, for example, we could still have these cover the entire area. But we could make a new group, which is dependent on velocity type. So we could rename this group with a simple double click as tuba growl. We can go group in new and add a new group and do maybe tuba legato. And that way we've got different key switches, however we choose to work it or have different key ranges and have each one set up as its own group, allowing us to make incredibly complex patches. If we open up the if we open up the piano again, we can see it's made use of velocity ranges here and we have the different groups for each. It will go to the group depending on how the keys are played. If you would like, I'll do a deep dive into building mappings with the sampler. Just leave a comment below the video. Last thing we have is Zone, and this is effectively our sample editor that allows us to get all those fine details tuned in for each individual sample. So whichever is selected in the mapping zone here will show up in Zone. And this gives us our start points with a very simple click and drag option now, our loop points as to where the note will loop over if the key is held, whether we require whether or not we require a fade in or fade out into the sample. Um, if we're cross fading into another sample for a loop or for perhaps release notes, they will often be cross fed. So when we release and we have a separate release note option, uh, we can get creative as well. We've got modes of like forward, reverse, alternate, like ping pong kind of effects and all sorts. Uh, because of the new GUI system in here, we can introduce the fade with just a slide. We can change our sample start time or very, very quickly and intuitively just on the GUI that's built in. So now we've got this really sensible rack sampler that we can just look down at a glance and program in and we can get incredibly deep with without getting lost like we used to in the EXS24 where we had a separate window for mapping and then we had to go somewhere else to do the sample zone editing and it was just all over the place. This is now incredibly streamlined and very well built in. I hope that helped you. I hope that gives you an idea of how this is going to work. Like I say, if you want me to do a deep dive in say building a patch in the sampler, throw it in the comments down below and I'll get that to you as soon as I can. Hope the video was helpful for you guys and I will see you on the next one. Just keep it real, I'm independent, I don't need no deal. I'm jaws on the beat, I got flow that kills. Do my thing with a few G's, Lauren Hill.